Hi, I'm Tomislav and this is Croatia off the beaten path. In this video, I'll take you to the island of Lošin and give you a few tips on how to spend your holidays. Lošin is the biggest town not only on Lošin island, but also among all Croatian islands. The town's population is about 6,000 and it has the richest tourist offer in the archipelago. Even in the case of bad weather, you can indulge in a wellness center, visit local bars, restaurants, two museums, or souvenir shops with local products such as olive oil. Despite the weather, don't forget to visit the network of its narrow cobbled streets or stroll along Riva where you'll experience its rich seafaring and shipbuilding tradition. Even nowadays there is a shipyard in the town. Mali Loshin is undoubtedly popular which is why I put it at number 10 of this list. However, now I'm about to discover some less visited places around it. Behind me, you can see rows of boats ready to take visitors on trips along the island's coastline. And if you're not fond of renting a boat, you can also sign up for some of the organized tours around the island. Daily excursion boats can take you to places like Ilovik Island, which is often nicknamed the Island of Flowers. You'll spot many front yards and houses adorned with bougainvillea and oleander in various colors. The only village on the island is also called Ilovik, and its population is only 85. It's a quiet place with no cars, but there are a few restaurants and several secluded beaches there. In summer, the island's population often doubles or triples in size when the expatriates return home for vacation. Many of them live in New York, Long Island area, where they even have a club called Ilovik Social Club. If you take another direction and head for Unia Island, don't be surprised when you see sheep, cattle or bales of hay. Agriculture and sheep farming have remained main occupations on the island, along with fishing. Overall, Unia offers a kind of retro experience. The sea is crystal clear and the beaches are natural, which means you might find some stranded eel grass on them, as they don't have a concessionaire who'd collect the grass on a daily basis. When you come to Mali Lushin, you'll notice that cycling is very popular there. There are sections which are quite narrow. There are sections that are just right. And there are sections where you'll have to be extra careful in order not to bump into joggers, walkers or families with children. The thing is, walkers and cyclists share the path, which might seem a little awkward, but a simple bell on your bike will help you feel safer. Just beware of the people with their headphones and cell phones. There are several places where you can rent a bike. There are also many routes to choose from. The bike can take you to Veli Lošin, 
or it can even take you to our next destination, Chicat Bay and Peninsula. Chicat is a common name for a bay, a cape, a lighthouse and a forest. You'll also find several luxurious villas and hotels there. The bay is protected from most winds, which is why the sea is almost always calm and warm there. The Chikat Peninsula is a typical example of Croatian indented coastline. It takes about 10 kilometers to walk or cycle all along its beautiful coves. On your way, you'll be able to catch a whiff of pine trees and find beaches with enough shade and privacy. The place number five is a very special museum, dedicated to a single artifact. It tells a story of Apoxiomenos, a bronze statue of an athlete which spent nearly 2000 years in the sea near Loshing Island. It was a Belgian tourist who accidentally discovered it in 1999. Mount Osorčica offers a popular hiking trail for all outdoor loving visitors. The first tourist who climbed it was Rudolf, the crown prince of Austria and the heir apparent to the Austro-Hungarian throne. It was March 28, 1887, when Rudolf climbed the path to the mount's highest peak. The peak's name is Televrin. Its elevation is 588 meters and it offers great views. On the trail you can also find a chapel, a cave and a mountain hut. For most of the way the path is rugged, so make sure you wear comfortable shoes. There are two paths leading to Mount Osorčica. One starts in the village of Nerezine and the other starts in Osor. In my opinion, the path from Nerezine is much more attractive, but it's also steeper. I started my climb at 7 o'clock in the morning, which was just right because I managed to climb the steepest section before it became too hot. The good thing about the islands of Tres and Loshin is the fact that there are no venomous snakes there. So all you need to take care of is just taking enough food with you and taking a lot of water on your trip. Pollution-free waters of Loshin Archipelago are home to about 200 bottlenose dolphins. Unfortunately, dolphin watching turned out to be my unfulfilled wish. To learn from my mistake, if you're interested in dolphin watching, don't sign up for the first boat tour that advertises playing with dolphins. Sure, there is a possibility to spot one in the distance, even on such trips, but there is only one way to do dolphin watching properly. It's with Blue World, the Institute for Marine Research and Protection. They are a non-profit organization based in Veli Loshin, and they even offer another trip free of charge in the case no dolphins are seen on the first trip. Blue World promotes responsible dolphin watching, and the fee also gives you entrance to the Loshin Marine Education Center. You can even adopt a dolphin, 
thus contributing to the protection of these species in their natural habitat. The coast of Loshin is lined with coves. You can even walk or cycle to some of them, although you'll need a boat to get to the most beautiful ones. The turquoise waters will tempt you to take the plunge. You just won't be able to resist. When it comes to beaches, Mali Loshin doesn't have just one big beach where everybody tends to go. Instead, you'll find dozens of smaller beaches, with people scattered along the coastline for miles. Many of them lie on rocks, but there are pebble sections too. Finally, I'm off the beaten path, on the island of Susak. If you dream of putting your feet in warm sand, this might be the island for you. The island is famous for its sandy beaches, and this is one of them. The colors are just amazing. Like a giant cake rising from the Adriatic Sea, the island of Susak is really one of a kind. It is mostly formed of loess and fine sand, laid on a limestone rock base. Therefore, it can be a bit unusual to watch cane grass while you're swimming. Susak used to be known for wine growing, but then, in the communist era, it was struck by a massive exodus. A huge number of the island's residents moved to the United States, mostly to New Jersey. About 2,500 emigrants or descendants of emigrants still live there. Some of them return to the island when they retire, whereas many ancestors regularly spend their vacation on Susak. The last Sunday in July is reserved for Emigrants Day, the biggest celebration in a year. The island is famous not only for sandy beaches, but also for its female folk costume. The short, brightly colored skirt will remind many people of a miniskirt. After seeing this paradise, I can only equip you with information on how to get to Loshin Archipelago. First, you should check the website of Jadrolinia. Croatian largest liner shipping company. Search for catamaran connections from the town of Rijeka or ferries from Brestova in Istria and Valbiska on Kirk Island. If you prefer buses, check the Arriva company's bus schedule as they operate direct services from Rijeka and Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. Mali Loshin also has an airport, and in 2018 it offered plane connections to Zagreb, Pula and Lugano, Switzerland. No matter how you decide to travel, I hope that by now you've got the idea on what to expect on this island. I can only wish you a pleasant trip, and if you're interested in more places off the beaten path, 
feel free to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.